Hi all, welcome to Curious Minds where we discover what, why, and how of everything. In this episode, we will try to connect the virtual world of computer programming to the physical world of chips and transistors. What does it mean to program a computer? What exactly is programming in a physical sense? Why gates? Why logic design? How does a computer actually work? To begin with, our physical intuition would go only as far as to understand the working of a transistor, which makes sense, since we know the properties of a silicon atom and its manifestation in the presence of an external voltage. We could also fathom to some extent that a bunch of transistors, rather billions of them, form a processor, the Intel's, AMD's of the world. On the other hand, in a virtual world, we all intuitively understand how to use an operating system, a social networking website, or a game. And to some extent, we could also fathom that these applications work with some sort of programming. But for most of us, this is as far as our intuition could go. The next step of connecting the programming to the processor gets a bit tricky. Let's try to connect this all-important link by building a simple, primitive, yet fully functional computer on our own. Let's begin with the basic things. First, we all know very well our computers, and that the CPU is its brain. And some of us also know of few things that go into the CPU. For the uninitiated, CPU mainly comprises of the processor itself, some form of memory, RAM, input and output. And from here onwards, the black boxes that you come across means I'm trying to abstract out of the underlying details so that we could focus our understanding. One thing to note here is ROM memory, which is a form of long-term memory. And the main job of any processor in its crudest form is just to read the contents of ROM in a cyclic manner. What happens after each read is actually determined by the internal logic design of the processor and the contents itself. In the real world, let's consider CPU to be a post office the delivery boy to be your processor, and the label on the letter to be your ROM. If your processor is dumb, then ROM would do nothing. If your ROM is empty, then your processor does nothing. If your processor and ROM are both properly designed, your application runs well. So building our computer basically involves two stages designing a processor and then writing an application to run on that. And let's also set some constraints for our primitive processor. That it can only take two bit input. It could perform only two operations and it gives only one bit output. Next comes the processor design, which begins with the fundamentals of logic design and ends with the gate synthesis. After that, a fabrication process would yield our primitive processor. Then on the programming front, we are writing a simple console application, which looks something like this. I know it looks crude, but don't be disheartened, as every complicated application, be it modern day games, web application, or a video editing software, all have the same lineage as our command line application. Underlying to this application is a simple C++ program. Then this program goes through a very important process of compilation, and yeah, we would like to abstract it out for now. The compilation actually converts our C++ program into a binary file, which is basically the famous bins and exes which we often come across while installing an application. Then comes another black box component, loader, which is basically akin to a package installer, the one that runs when you double click .exe. This loader puts our binary file into the ROM memory. The gates that we design are basically called ALU, a subcomponent of processor. This ALU is supported by a black box which fetches the data from ROM and another black box which takes output to the monitor in few registers, which is like a private memory. This altogether comes to be known as a processor. As we already know from our post office example, all the processor ever does is just go through the instructions on the ROM in a sequential manner and keep looping it in a predefined manner depending on the program itself. Now that we have loaded our program, Let's see if our computer works with the test inputs. Looks like the program one ran well. Let's change the program now. 
All we need to do is recompile the new code and update the ROM memory. And voila, the computer software is updated. Let's see if it works with the test inputs. So our computer indeed works as designed. And more importantly, along the way, we also were able to connect the world of programming to the physical world of processors. So here you go. Each and every complicated program connects to the physical world in a similar manner, albeit scaling up proportions as the need be. Hope you like this episode of What, Why, and How of Everything. If you like our approach, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to understand anything else in a similar manner or open up any of the black boxes that we came across in this video, please bump us with your comments below. Cheers.